we'll get this thing going so we can uh, celebrate this April 1st, this volunteer month. Um, we appreciate you all gathering. It, it just shows your passion for our Dignity's mission, um, our focus on dignity and, and justice and inclusion and equality and providing hope in the community um, for those that, that really need it most. And really do appreciate you all taking the time. We're uh, going to get out of here in about half an hour. If you have a question, feel free to raise your hand or some of the staff will be uh, staying on the call afterwards. Um, and if you want to stay on a little bit afterwards and uh, talk with us more or, or have any questions that we can try to answer for you, we'll be available for you then. And then we'll be doing this again uh, in about a month on May 6th and really do hope you join us. Um, this, this means a lot to the, to the staff and just the community that we've developed over the last 13 years. So please continue to join us uh, the best you can. Um, you'll see uh, we have the chat box as well. Feel free to throw things in there. Ben will be moderating that. And let's get started. We'd like to start each of these uh, events or orientations or mission check-ins, as we call them now, uh, off with a moment of prayer. And today we have uh, Pastor Megan Collins uh, from Maitland Presbyterian Church. And I believe she's on the call. And Megan, if you could, please unmute yourself. I didn't see her come in. Um... So I think maybe Michael, you or Anne want to say the prayer. Um, Anne is always really good at a prayer on the spot. <laughs> All right, spot prayer, Anne. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. Lord, I thank you for each person that has come to this screen to support each other and the mission of iDignity. Lord, thank you for using us to be your hands and feet as we reach out to clients in desperate need of being able to prove who they are. Lord, we dedicate this time to you and we ask that you continue to bless our lives in service to you. We pray this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. All right. And Anne, I believe you are going to talk a little bit about our sponsors for this moment. Yes, yes. So if Megan, I'll talk a little bit about Megan first. If she hops on, Megan, I'm, Megan Collins is from Maitland Presbyterian Church, and they came on last year as one of our sponsors. If you're from that church, just put your hand up. I know we've got a few uh, folks from that church, um, and they have started to volunteer with us and give to us financially. So it is Holy Week, so I'm sure Megan is probably up to her eyeballs in details. So we'll cut her some grace this morning. Um, another wonderful sponsor is Epic Residential, and I want, would like to Welcome Justin Sand. Justin has just been one of our amazing champions. He has told numerous friends and family about iDignity and gotten them involved. And last fall for the Super Duper, he challenged his team at Epic Residential to raise money for us, which turned out to be really awesome. So if I've invited Justin to say a few words about why he personally supports our dignity and what it means to Epic Residential. Justin? We lost Justin, but I think he'll be right back. Um, do we wanna cover maybe announcements while we wait for Justin to come back? That sounds good. All right, should we go on with the successes? Yes, go, go, ahead. go ahead and do the announcements, Vielka. Very good, yes, yes, yes. We have lots of announcements. Um, specifically with um, how we have served at ISD, so this is our uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday identification service days. So with your support, with your donations, with everything that we receive from you, we have been able to, re to, to serve clients and these clients are just continuing to come. So as of the month of March, we had, and we have a beautiful uh, visual here that Ben is sharing with everyone. We've been able to serve 23,978 clients. That's an amazing number. And we're uh, looking forward to having this grow as, as well. Uh, the clients that we have served in this past month, unique ones are 237. We've had a combined uh, birth certificate applications started. This is either Florida or out of state birth certificates. Uh, they're 86. 
We also have began to serve our clients by um, applying for social security cards. Uh, we had not been able to, and it is now 20. So this is a very, very big number for us right now, um, considering COVID and how the office at the social security has been closed this whole time. Um, so 20, we're excited. ID vouchers issued in the month of March has been 76, and all the volunteers that we have received, uh, their support is 669. So we're so, so, so thankful. I appreciate everything that you do. So we're excited that we're having these numbers race and grow every single month. So thank you so much, guys. And here's Danielle. All right. We are going to bump into um, talking a little bit um, about some stories. Uh, with National Volunteer Month, we were thinking about about what what stories are are being told by by volunteers, right? And and all the different stories that you all have um, from your experience with iDignity. So what we're doing is um, we're going to actually hear a little bit about two different volunteering experiences, and uh, and I'm I'm curious to see how how different they are, but how very very similar <laughs> as uh, both of these volunteers. One started um, back in 2008. She was at the first event. And the other volunteer we're going to hear from uh, started back when we just started Identification Service Days. And, uh, and so we're really, really excited to hear both of these individuals talk. So we're going to start out with Liz Borth. Um, Liz was there um, on one of the first events or the very first event, right? So we would love to hear, Liz, um, tell us a little bit about your first time volunteering with iDignity and what that experience was like. All right, there I am. Um, yes, boy, that seems so long ago, yet not very long ago. I often get so overwhelmed with how quickly time goes by. Um, I was thinking about that event and kind of got a few other events muddled and suddenly the whole clarity came through and I was like, wow, that was amazing. So I have to preface a little, there was a group of people that worked very hard for, oh my goodness, not quite a year, but six to eight months, very hard to put iDignity together. So here we arrive on our very first event very nervous, yet very excited, because it was an unknown. We planned so hard, but you never, you know, the best laid plans always go awry, and they did not, which was amazing. Um, I just heard the stats, only 30 volunteers. I cannot hardly believe that. It seemed like there was a lot more people there than that. I just have to share a little bit about how it looked. Every time I would go to the rescue mission there on, I think Central, right? Anyway, as I would walk up or drive past, the line of people, the queue waiting to get in was always, um, I'm gonna say heartwarming. I never felt pity. I never felt sad. I felt for myself a little bit of excitement. And then as I would walk through the crowd to get into the back door of the mission, which is actually the front door, so that we could get to the volunteer check-in area, um, I, I was just enthralled. Now, we used to go in through the very front, and then later we moved and went in the back way. But our first stop would be a volunteer room, welcoming, warm. You know that old Cheers TV show where they say where everybody knows your name? Well, we all had to wear patches or you know badges, but everybody knew our name. Hi, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Sign in. It was, it was uplifting. It was like a party. My first and probably for the longest time area that where I served was actually the provider room, the chaos room. Nothing but talking, 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 talking. The other thing we did here was violins and a piano and some singing to hope calm everyone down. Um, but it was just a, a low grade noise the whole time. And then we could talk personally to the people in our area, um, but it was not like I had to shout at them because I could, I could hear them. It was like a circus. It was like a circus. Every room had a different event going on and you just didn't know where to look next. But for the client, what seemed to be chaos was not. We had shepherds and the shepherds would lead us and lead the person into the right place. They would get to the right place happily, safely. And then at the very end, they would wait not very patiently. 
And that was part of my job was to calm people down and let them know that this is the end of the line. You are done. You didn't have to go to three different agencies and take four or five days, just in a few hours. I know you've been here since 3 a.m., but just in a few hours, you will have completed all the steps and walk out of here with your ID. The flow van was parked outside. It was an amazing thing to see. Um, I know we don't get to see it now, but someday it'll come back. And the people just smiled every time they came out. It was always happy. I, can, I don't ever remember anybody, clients or otherwise, being upset. And I mean upset in the way that they would be fighting and yelling and screaming. They were upset because their turn didn't come fast enough. The first day was exhausting. But when we finished and we sat down, everyone was quiet when Michael said, so how did it go? Because we couldn't believe how well it went. It was amazing. I can't, I wish I could come back. I wish I could serve. I wish I could have been at every single one. The Salvation Army had a beautiful facility, but there's nothing like that old Salvation Army building. Uh, excuse me, rescue mission building. It was, it was something. So thanks for listening. I hope those of you that do remember had a little bit of a picture of how it looked and, and how it felt. And I hope my word pictures were clear enough. Thanks for inviting me. Hey, thank, thanks so much, Liz. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing seeing how many people have um, formed iDignity into, into what it is and what it became, right? And, uh, and so thank you for, for being such an essential part of, of building building this thing as it as it is today. Um, things definitely look a little bit different now, right? Um, with COVID, we had to make a ton of changes. And so I would love to invite Tom Harrison to unmute himself. Tom started volunteering in the middle of COVID. Um, and that's a pretty amazing thing uh, that that he, he hadn't experienced all of the energy and the excitement of the very large scale events. Um, I think he came for one tour, right, Tom? Um, That's right. But, but so he never got to experience what that was and, and jumped in in the middle of, of the COVID world um, when we were um, about just as unsure of what it was going to feel like as, as that first event, right? Um, it, it was a whole new structure. And so Tom, I'd love to hear a little bit about your first time volunteering. Well, thank you. Thank you. And it's good to see the bottom half of your smile, Daniel. I only get to see this much of it before you know, <laughs> with, the, with the masks every day. But um, I did have the opportunity to um, experience the, uh, the event kind of from a, um, a, you know, from a kibitzing standpoint. I saw it and gave me a tour. And um, I guess that was back in February, the last time you had it. And I was all pumped up and exciting because I was just so impressed with um, the organization, the amount of people that have, were there and how just how smoothly everything was going. And um, so I volunteered and only to find out, nope, can't do anything right now. So waiting and waiting. And then finally, I guess in July or August, um, got an email or a call and said, hey, we can train you and get you ready to go. We're opening up in Jackie's place, which is there behind the courthouse. So I said, sure, let's get started. And when my first day was, um, really very, very simple, easy, and very welcoming. I, the first person I met was Vialka and she set me up with uh, the name badge and checked my temperature, make sure I was cool enough to get in. And um, basically I've worked a couple of different uh, jobs there. One being either the, uh, the welcoming party, which is the, at the queue outside. We have a tent outside and we pre-screen people for COVID and and uh, get them all set up with a disclaimer before we allow them to come into Jackie's place because the confines of the space is so tight that we want to be careful not to get too much of a crowd in there. And then um, I also was able to do the um, comprehensive initial interviews. And really, it's really, it was both, both ends of it was very rewarding to me because the reason I wanted to volunteer was I saw how many people were being helped <clears throat> and just how um, excited they were about it. I remember that tour that Ann gave me in February, walking through one of the doors with different departments and one of the clients looked up at me and said, hi, Tom. And I said, how does she know my name? Then I forgot I had the name badge on. And she goes, thank you for all the help you guys are giving us. And it just really kind of blew me away. So it kind of solidified that I was gonna be a volunteer. And um, 
the um, the staff members, I mean, uh, Vielka and Danielle and Charlene and Tom, they're all so um, helpful to make sure we don't um, go down the wrong path or to keep us on a straight and narrow, but also in such a friendly way. And I haven't met a single person that I haven't really enjoyed being with as far as the volunteers. So it's just been quite a treat. It's um, been a fun experience and I encourage anybody that would be like to do it. Uh, it's very safe also. I wanna encourage people to know that, that uh, I never once felt threatened from a COVID situation. They're uh, very careful with um, mandating mask wearing, keeping the distance. The um, Jackie's place inside is just amazingly protected with the um, plexiglass, uh, uh, cubicles, and um, it all gets done. And I'll tell you, by the end of um, end of uh, half a day, um, you feel like you've really got a lot done. You feel a little tired, actually. So it's kind of it's, it's uh, we're making things happen for people that need that help. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. And uh, and you know, in in the same way that the that the initial initial teams were trying to figure out what procedures work and what things work, um, Tom's been a part of that team of well, that that wasn't a good idea, right? Let's let's adjust, or or maybe we can enhance it this way. So, thank you for for helping us figure out what it looks like in this environment, and uh, and for being a part of this team. Um, one thing I didn't really, really mention is that April is National Volunteer Month, um, and April 18th to the 24th is actually Volunteer Appreciation Week. So, um, so today is a celebration of each of you, um, and we would like to um, move on into um, move on into something we want to share with you. Um, volunteering with iDignity certainly looks different now, um, and has looked different every year, right? But at its core, volunteering with iDignity has always been an uplifting experience for, for one reason, and it really is volunteers. I think these volunteers are as kind and compassionate as they come. Our volunteers are the reason that clients feel accepted, respected, and valued from the second they arrive. iDignity is truly blessed to have the support of so many amazing people. We're lucky to serve alongside them and call them our friends. Volunteers are the backbone of this mission, and iDignity would be hopeless without them. Thank you to every one of you who has given your time to help a stranger obtain their identification. You have changed so many lives for the better, including ours. Thank you guys um, for, for making this possible, and uh, it's, it's an absolute honor to serve with you. Um, we are going to jump back because um, I think Justin is back on the call here. So Justin, if you can unmute yourself, we would love to hear from you. Justin? All right. Oh, good. I'm Yay. here, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry about the, the confusion there. I, I tried, but unsuccessfully. So uh, been happy to be with you over phone here and appreciate the, the invite, Ann and Michael. Um, uh, you know, I think the, the question was, you know, why am I involved with uh, Dignity? And, you know, I think uh, one of the comments I just heard in the video is I feel lucky to serve. And, and, and that's really uh, not necessarily why I started, but, but that's how I feel. And uh, I was introduced to Dignity initially through a, a super duper, uh, through a board member friend. And, um, you know, loved hearing the story and, and it could certainly tell that the work that was being done was powerful in terms of the impact it had on, on people's lives. And then later came uh, for a tour of, of one of the big format events and was just, you know, blown away by the, the operation and some of the things that have been mentioned in terms of just the vastness of the need and the excitement of the people receiving help and, and just the joy and commitment of the uh, volunteers that were there working. And so to, to have the privilege to jump in and try to, uh, you know, carry the mission forward with the capital campaign just really registered with me. And so I, I think it's, it's kind of all those things, you know, Epic Residential, uh, my company is a developer of apartments. And so there's a lot of touch points to my, my world uh, and what iDignity offers in terms of identification and, and, and that being a gateway to uh, a lease in an apartment or, or, you know, shelter or employment or a bank account, all, all those things really hit home for, for my working world. Uh, but, you know, the mission is just uh, something that most of us don't uh, fortunately have to 
you know, experience firsthand, you know, what, what life could be like without being, you know, being able to prove who you are. Uh, you know, I'd never particularly enjoyed going to the, the DMV to get a driver's license, but that's kind of the, the only frustration I ever had was, was, you know, ID. Uh, but when you hear the stories and, and, and the setbacks that, uh, not having identification can, can do to a person, um, it, it is mind blowing. Um, and then just the, the, the depth of the need out there is, is amazing too. And the fact that identity is so unique in what it offers, um, to have the opportunity to help, you know, uh, confirm that, you know, ability for, for years to come and, and to expand on that, uh, was something that I, I felt like I, I could not be a part of. So thank you for the opportunity you guys have given me in return. And again, nice to, to be with you all this morning. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate your perseverance and sorry about the technical issues. That was partially our fault as well. Um, but really, uh, grateful for, for all your support and all the people that you brought alongside you to support our dignity's mission. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Happy, happy to be here. Thank you guys. Have a, have a good day. You too. Very nice. Thank you, Justin. I do want to say, uh, just to piggyback on uh, what Danielle said, this is a volunteer appreciation month. And as the volunteer coordinator, I want to see, say that I'm super honored uh, to be part of this nonprofit organization. It's just amazing how much I have learned um, from the organization, but also from you volunteers. It's just, um, I'm, I'm just blown away by everything that, that you're willing to do. And every time that I call you and ask you to please volunteer, every yes to me is, is so flattering, you know, because it's just not necessarily helping identity. You're helping the clients. You're doing this for them because it's in you. You love it. You love to volunteer. And, and to me, it's just, it's a learning experience. It's a lesson for my own personal life. So I'm very thankful. And, and this is the best month, I think, through the year. Um, to say this, and thank you so much, volunteers, because without you, we would not be able to do this. So again, thank you for being present. And um, along with that, I just want to share a very quick quote. Uh, it's just something that I feel uh, every day. And it, this is from Elizabeth Andrew. It's um, something you may have already heard. Volunteers do not necessarily have the time. They just have the heart. So thank you again. Uh, and on that note, I want to thank you for um, saying yes to come back to ISD through Identification Service Days. Um, for anyone who has not been able to come back since back in the day, a year ago, um, like Tom was mentioning, he, um, he feels it's very safe. We are taking very good care of our volunteers, our clients, and the staff. So feel free to reach out to me. You can come. Uh, call me. You can just go ahead and go to info at identity.org, um, click on volunteer. We have some opportunities right now, and they're mainly from home. So if you still feel like you should stay home a little bit longer, there are still opportunities there. You can either come in person, but we can also train you to stay home and serve clients uh, over the phone. So that's one of the opportunities. Again, if you got the second vaccine, I hope you're feeling good. I got my second one recently, and I got over it. I'm, I'm alive. Um, so yes, go ahead and reach out to me and, and know that we love you. We're still missing you if you're not here and we look forward to hearing from you again. Okay. Thank you so much. And now I pass it on to myself because speaking of volunteers, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a very special person here in this group. Um, another very special volunteer that, um, I cannot say her name yet, but it's a person who is a student at Rawlings College. Uh, she has dedicated 100 hours to help iDignity uh, document a lot of important procedures. These documents will help iDignity increase the efficiency and maybe create some of the new volunteer opportunities. She has an interest in learning more about marginalized groups in the community while advocating for them. Um, I'm not going to say her name, but just a little background on what she will be receiving today, which is the golden ticket. We choose one person every month. Um, is basically an award that symbolizes the outstanding hard work and involvement in supporting and elevating identity's mission. We, go to the, we call it the golden ticket because it's how the clients out there call the ID. Basically, it opens doors for them, employment, 
benefits, uh, shelter, all kinds of benefits and resources. So the golden ticket has been awarded to Haley Sauls, and she's right here. Welcome, Haley. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that uh, wonderful intro. <laughs> um, yeah, so I already have it in my possession. I got to see Danielle in person, so I already have it. Ooh, a lot of glare, I can barely see it, but it's there. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a wonderful experience uh, getting to volunteer with iDignity. Um, when I started, I didn't know too much about the organization. Um, I was looking through uh, all of the different places that I could volunteer at. And when I saw one was about organization and being detail oriented, I was like, Ooh, that's the one. <laughs> um, and of course, too, uh, I did some research and I found a video that a past Rollins volunteer did promoting iDignity's work. And I thought it was really interesting to see because I was kind of shocked to see that it took like volunteers saying, hey, we have a problem in the community where there's people that can't get identification. It took a lot of people that had good in their heart to help out the rest of the community. So I really wanted to be a part of it. Um, and uh, I, of course, started during COVID time. I was online, so I didn't get a chance to go to the physical site. Um, but my time working with uh, everyone has been great. I got to work directly under Charlene and Tom uh, and Ben, and I got to speak with Danielle. And um, everyone that I talked to was so warm and welcoming. Uh, I think I said to everyone that I got to work with that when I started, I, you know, I knew that tons of volunteers have gone through identity. So I just kind of assumed I'd be volunteer number 607 and then go on my merry way. I thought I would just be kind of a part of the herd, but I really felt like my work was really valued and that um, I was an important part of, uh, of the organization. And it's, it's wonderful to hear that the um, documents that I helped create will definitely be used by volunteers to come. Um, I've also mentioned to some of the people that I've worked with that um, one experience I had to go to the physical site. Um, for one of my courses, we had to, uh, it was for a multicultural class, and we had to um, focus on a disenfranchised or marginalized group in the community. And there was a different group from my own that chose to work with people that have voting rights taken away from them. And a large chunk of those people would be people who are homeless and or do not have identification. So I gave them Danielle's contact to see if they would want be able to interview anyone. And along with that, they also went through the community. They went to downtown Orlando and just talked to other people that were living, that were living without any shelter. And not shockingly, uh, a lot of the people that they talked to without being prompted to instantly brought up by dignity. Uh, it was so clear that through their presentation from what I saw from their presentation that I dignity just has such a stronghold and it's, you know, is a part of the heart of downtown Orlando and is so important to a lot of the community down there. So it felt wonderful to see that. Like I said, since I couldn't go to the physical site, I thankful that I got to see the impact of the organization. And I am, thank you, I'm so uh, grateful to have been able to help out with the organization and to have had a lasting impact. So uh, yes, thank you everyone for, uh, for your time and thank you for the award. Thank you, Haley. Hey. Thank you. Thanks, Haley. Well deserved and uh, very well spoken. And appreciate all you did for iDignity, and um, I'm glad you realized you were not a number. Um, it's still not a number, and hopefully come back. Uh, that is the end of today's uh, uh, dignity mission uh, moment, and we're going to end with a quote. Um, and I? when I when I looked up this quote, I was humbled. It's from a a well-known musician, a poet named uh, James Durst. Um, and when I uh, looked him up and did a little background research, um, I was stunned to see that he actually passed away on this day on April 1st. 
um, at the age of 71 back in uh, about five years ago. Uh, but anyway, that, uh, as a poet, he does a, a good bit of wordplay, um, and as is this quote, and it goes like this. Help one another. There is no time like the present and no present like the time. I like the wordplay, uh, and I like you all, and I appreciate all you all have done for iDignity, and, and hope you have a wonderful April 1st. Uh, we'll be hanging out for a little bit longer. If you want to hang out and have any questions or any additional thoughts, we'd love to hear it. Other than that, have a great day.